this video I want to look at just sweetening up the head a little bit. Some of the special little details that are subtle but make all the difference. Um, the first one I want to look at is his glasses. These glasses have a nice little effect on them called CC lens combined with the magnify effect. So right here, CC lens is a really nice filter. It creates a, a really convincing lens distortion. I've just turned off magnify on his eye here, as you can see on his right eye. And if we look at that, it creates this really nice lens effect. So you get this really subtle blurring, a nice distortion of the image, really convincing, uh, very realistic. It's a really nice effect. And there's a couple of places that you can use it. So for the first place, we're gonna use it on these glasses and we're gonna combine it with magnify. So just to make his glasses look nice and thick. So as you can see, those two together create a really convincing look. All right, let's have a look at this filter. So essentially what you do is you grab your glasses. Uh, I have the glasses here. And let's turn on the paper background. Okay, so we have the glasses. And what I did is I created, these are the two layers I created. I created, I went to layer and I went new adjustment layer. And then I brought the adjustment layer down to the glasses level here and made it 3D, took the scale way down till I could see the edges of it. And then you have to parent it, then I parented it to the glasses, okay? And I want it to be just behind the glasses. So I want it just to be pushed in a little bit. Uh, and this actually works out okay, it's 10 in. Let's make it five, which means it's just going to be just behind the glasses in the Z plane. And then I'm going to move this over until it's in the right area. Perfect. And then the next thing I did is I just created a really quick mask on it. Just running around the edges here, okay? Really quite simple. And if you mess up one, you can adjust it later. Just pressing B, adjust that guy a little bit. It don't have to be perfect because we're never going to see the full lens. All right, so that's, that's the lens right there. And then what I did is I applied Distort CC Lens. Okay, and as you can see the effects there, this is my center point. I wanna put that, I'm going to put it for now in the middle of the glasses. And then what I'll do is I'll take my size of the lens down. As you can see, as you bring the size of the lens down, you get a greater distortion because you're actually creating more and more of a fish eye. So I'm going to bring it right to about there. I can see the distortions happening. Um, actually, let's just do this. I'm going to apply a quick, uh, quick effect here, generate. And I'm going to generate a checkerboard. And let's make that a little bit bigger. And this will just help us see the effect a lot more clearly, okay? Blending mode, add. Okay, there we go. Let's go back to here. So now I can see more clearly what the effect is doing. Now the, the big thing that we're going to be working with is the actual center point. This is the thing that makes the effect really powerful, especially when animating it. Right now, one of the problems is, is let's turn the kid's face back on. If I just have, I have right now, I've put the effect where I want it, everything's good, right? This lens is parented to the glasses, and the glasses are parented to the kid's head, neck or his head, um, his neck pivot point. So now if I move the glasses around, look what happens. That lens filter is not following his head at all. The glasses are doing all sorts of weird things, and it's because that center point isn't moving. This could be a desirable effect in some conditions, but not for what we're doing. There's a little piece of code that will help correct this. This piece of code will allow the center point to exist in 3D space. Currently, it finds itself in 2D space. It's only defined by X and Y. We need to define it by Z as well so that it can be identified in 3D space. The way to do this is this little piece of code right here. Go into your, you go into your effect, Alt-click on the center. This little chunk of code is going to come up here. Let's just make this full. Okay, and I'm going to paste that code. So essentially, this code would start out like this. And what this means is that this center point is now put into composition space. It's no longer reading its position in layer space. In layer space, the center point is at 1816, 1500. 
That means it's at 1816 pixels by 1500 on this layer somewhere. We need to convert it into composition space, which is three dimensional, and that's what that does. And because we don't have a Z value here, we can define this Z value ourselves because right now in composition space, the Z value is actually at zero. So it's, it's actually just behind the glasses anyway. So now that we've defined them in 3D space, the center point's no longer in the right position, right? So, and you're finding I can't move it anymore. So what I can do is I can actually just type numbers in here if I want. So I'm gonna try, let's try 500 on the X. See, we can see the center point right here. I just want it to be in the center of the glasses roughly. Um, another way you could do it is it's just a more complicated coding is actually tell it to include this into this, but I don't really think it's necessary. It's really so quick just to position it manually like this. Okay, and then here we're going to go negative 600. The lens center is actually moving with the eye. So when we click on this layer again, there you go, the center point is moved with the with the actual eye. So let's put it let's watch that again. Let's put our rotation to zero and see where that center point is. There it is, right where it should be. It actually may, in this particular example, it may be too far forward because it's actually sticking way out here. So I maybe have it too far on the on the X. So let's try something like 300 push it back a little bit because I kind of want it to stay in the middle of the eye even when his head's down. So it's just something to experiment with a little bit until you get it roughly where you want it. Uh, maybe let's try zero and see what it does. Zero actually might be better for what we're doing. Um, let's, I'm going to try to adjust the head again. Let's try to put the head way up here and see where it ends up. Check that center point again. That center point is right roughly in the middle because we can see our anchor points there. So let's try and move it all the way down again and see where that center point is still kind of in the middle actually this is where we want it so it's it's zero so I think that's that works fine so the last thing I did is I wanted to add magnify to it and the only reason I wanted to do that was I wanted the eyes to be a little bit bigger because I find the kid looks a little creepy so then the next filter I applied is I just went into here distort magnify and just to get a sense of how it's going to look before I plug the code in um, let's make the magnification 150. I guess that's fine. Let's try 150. Increase the size. Okay, so that's going to make it bigger. That's great. Opacity. We want opacity all the way up. Otherwise, it does this weird stuff. It could be a desirable effect. It's up to you. We can feather it off at the edges. I don't really think we need to. I don't see a point. Unless you wanted to reduce the size of it like that, and then you can feather off the, the sides of it. But we don't have a dual lens here. It's it's just one lens, and so I just fill it right up. Um, let's bring the magnification down just a bit. There we go. And now all we're going to do is we're going to take. We I want the center of the magnify exactly the same place as the center of the CC lens. So I'm just going to copy that code. And on center, I'm going to Alt click, and Control V, and paste that code. And there you go. So let's. Uh, Let's have a look at this guy here. Um, it's just not a lot of room. That's what happens with these low resolution tutorials. Okay, so let's move its head around. So there you go, we have some nice magnification and some really nice lens distortion. It makes those glasses. The other thing you could do is if you really wanted, you can add all sorts of other things. We could generate a ramp if we wanted. So let's do a ramp just for fun. And let's make one point there, and we'll make the dark point here. Let's make it radial. You know, you can do all sorts of things with your glasses now. Make these kind of bluish purple. Make them really kind of a crazy cool guy. Those sweet lenses. Okay, so we have an orange in the middle in this. It'll be the same, I think it'll be the same problem. Yeah, so you see how we're moving past that orange line? This may be desi desirable, like let's say you wanted, maybe there was a sun in the scene or whatever, and you wanted to act almost like a reflection, that works great, you know, as he's turning his head, he has that orange in there. Or let's say for instance, we wanted to do a linear ramp. Okay, this is a blue, this will be a blue for the sky, and then that'll go up here, and then down here, this color, will be a greenish color for the ground. Okay, and let's just turn that opacity up. There we go. 
So let's say we have something like this, blue sky, green ground. Well, the cool thing about this is if our character is looking around, as he looks up, the sky gets blue. As he looks down, the ground is green. I mean, you can really do all sorts of things. It's actually really fun. All right, so the last little sweetening thing I want to look at for this particular character is to round off his iris to give it more of a dimensional effect when it's moving around. So we're going to go into his face. And uh, yeah, look how different it is. He looks way creepier with those little little eyes, which can be completely desirable. But for this current project, he has to be a lot more likable. This more reminds me of a garbage pail kid or something, which I personally think is awesome, but um, I don't think the client loves it as much. In this, we're, I'm going to apply the CC lens to give a really nice round eye effect. So let's go here. This currently, this pupil is linked up. It's got some code linked into it with uh, the the looking looking about controls. So these these controls here, and I've already got a whole bunch of animation on them right now, but they actually drive drive his eyes, where his eyes look. So as you can see, his eyes look around based on where this controller is. So what I want to do is I'm going to add a little an adjustment layer. Okay. And I'm going to go in and let's grab again distort and let's get CC lens. Perfect. Now right now when it initially comes in it's way it's just way too severe and it really has only to do with the size of the lens. If you want to change the severity of the distortion you just turn down the convergence. Um, and also the convergence dictates what kind of lens it is whether it's concave or convex. So I think what we want for this is actually we want negative 100 which will actually make the eyeball smaller but that's actually okay and what this does is let's, let's I'm going to release this eyeball and the pupil and then I'm going to move it around as the pupil moves now you see how it's actually looking like it's moving around on a round surface this is what I'm looking for now the thing the one thing is though is I actually don't get the eye will pro probably when it gets to the edge of the eyeball it should probably be a little further up. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to just size this down even a little more and uh, let's see how that looks. And it may be too severe. You may have to play with it a little bit. There, I really like that. And so what you're going to find too is that people might get a little too large. So then all you have to do is just scale it down a little bit. Um, you can just scale it till it's a d desirable size. Okay, so I'm going to go back in. I might actually reduce the intensity because I think it's made my um, I have a little too a little too compressed, so I'm just going to size this up a little bit. Maybe just put it to just go ahead. Let's make it a little bigger. Maybe to that that there. Okay, so let's go back in and see what that's done to his head. So this was the left eye. Let's have a look now. See as you can see that left eye is a lot smaller now. Um, but let's let's do the same thing. I'm going to copy that effect and I'm going to put it in his other eye. So let's do his right eye now. Um, let's paste that effect. There we go. And then go back to the head here. Okay, so, oh yeah, and I also forgot to turn his pupil back on, on the other eye. There we go. Okay, brilliant. So let's have a look at how that looks. So uh, let's grab that and pull this over, see how it looks. It's a really subtle effect, but it can work really nicely. It can make a huge difference, especially if you're doing a shot that really focuses on the character's face, um, like a close-up or anything like that. It, it just adds, it can just add another sense of dimension to it. Anyways, I feel like it's working really nicely. It's really subtle, but again, subtlety is really key when it comes to this stuff. And right now his pupils might be a little bit small, but I did build a scalar into his pupil size. So all I have to do is we'll just put him at zero because I had them at negative 10. So let's have a look at how they look now. Personally, I think it looks great. In the next video, we're going to look at attaching the head to the body of the puppet and moving the control set outside of the head composition, making it easier to animate.